Good news everyone, ARM processors are coming to GKE. When using ARM with GKE, sure, you can start from scratch and create a new GKE cluster with ARM nodes. But many of you are already using GKE. So let's walk through how you can also add new node pools with ARM processors to an existing GKE cluster with x86 nodes. So we'll start with this single GKE cluster with one node pool running x86 chips. This is our default node pool, running VMs from the E2 machine family. This family is backed by AMD and Intel processors, both x86 architecture. We can verify this by running a simple Go app that uses the runtime package in the Go standard library to read and return the underlying runtime architecture. In our case, AMD64 for x86 or ARM64 for ARM. There's already one replica of an x86 version of this app running behind a Kubernetes service. So let's send a request to this external IP for the Kubernetes service. We can see in the response that the current architecture is AMD64 or x86. This is our current application, our one pod replica. But now comes a tricky part. What if you're new to ARM? What does one do to get a workload not just running on ARM processors, but in a container? in a Kubernetes cluster. Let's walk through building this same app, but for ARM. The first thing to notice is the GORCH or Go architecture environment variable. We are now specifying ARM64 in this value. This tells the Go compiler what architecture we want to build for. The second thing to notice is that we are using a multi-stage build, which is typically a best practice for building lean containers. We were also doing this in the x86 version. But the thing to note here is that we are specifying a different ARM64 base image in our second stage. And then we copy over the Go binary we've built. So we'll build this container image using this Docker file and push it to Artifact Registry. With the container image now built, now we have to actually make sure that we have ARM VMs ready to run our app. You'll notice that we'll still be using the standard gcloud command to add a node pool to our cluster. But this time, we're specifying T2A VMs the VMs running ARM processors. And now that our node pool creation has completed, we can see that we have side by side our default pool running E2 VMs and our ARM pool running T2A VMs. Again, the great part about this in GKE is that if we are trying to slowly and safely migrate to ARM from x86, we can run the infrastructure for each architecture simultaneously. We can also deploy this ARM app behind the same Kubernetes service that exposes our x86 app. This allows us to serve requests using both the x86 and ARM versions of our applications so that we can put into practice safe patterns like canary deployments. Now, let's deploy our ARM app. We're going to use Customize to deploy the new version of our app. If you're not familiar with it, this tool allows us to have a base configuration of YAML and patch specific changes separately. This gives us an easy way to see what we're changing when we deploy the ARM version of this app. The first is a matching toleration for the taint that we applied to the node pool earlier. We can see that the key and the value are the same as the taint that we had when we created the node pool. The second is the new container image that we just built. Okay, now let's actually deploy our app. We'll note here that Customize is integrated into kubectl, and the way we'll use it is we'll write kubectl apply-k 
and we'll specify where the files we just went over are. We see our ARM deployment has now been created. And if we get our pods in service, we can see that we have one pod of each version, all behind the same service. Now let's send some traffic to our Kubernetes service again. As you can see here, both the x86 and ARM replicas are successfully running in our cluster, exposed by the same service and responding to traffic. We did it. We are now successfully using our ARM nodes in GKE. But before we go, one thing we do want to address is the concern that with this example, you now might be maintaining two different build processes, one for x86 and one for ARM. To keep a single consistent build process, Let's take a look at building a multi-architecture image. In this new Docker file that we have, notice that we are still performing a multi-stage build like we did earlier. Only now, we don't need to use an ARM base image in the second stage. What's even cooler is that container runtimes are aware enough to read the manifest, referencing the images built, and pull the right image for its architecture. So now, let's deploy this multi-architecture app. In this scenario, we deployed multiple replicas of this multi-architecture app, and we can see that some of them get scheduled to ARM nodes and some of them get scheduled to x86 nodes. This helps us keep a single and consistent build process. Of course, there is the caveat that you may not be able to take the simpler approach if your app is using platform-specific functionality or the language you're using might not be as friendly to cross-compilation like our Go app. Either way, hopefully this introduction got you excited about learning more about potentially building for ARM and using GKE support for ARM nodes to run your applications. My name is Anthony Bouchon, Developer Relations Engineer here at Google. Thank you for spending this time with me. To learn more and dig deeper, check out the links in the description. We'll see you next time.